fit for the kingdom. And, and I want to I wanna lift up something uh, for you real fast, and I'm going to be out of here. Uh, it's in the book of 1 Kings. Let me give you just a little bit of text, uh, and, and I'll be out of your way. I promise I'm not going to hit anybody with these belts. I'm going to actually show you something. Uh, I want to look at 1 Kings 19, and I want to just pull up just two, two pieces of, of Scripture while we're there, 19 uh, and 19. So he departed from there. Everybody say he departed. And found Elisha, the son of Zephat who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him, and he was the 12th. Then Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him, and he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Please let me kiss my mother and my father, and then I will follow you. And he said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? So Elisha turned back from him, and he took a yoke of oxen and slaughtered them and boiled their flesh using the oxen's equipment and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he arose and followed Elijah and became his servant. I want to talk for just a brief minute about being fit for the kingdom. Everybody say fit. I don't want to talk about being fit for the kingdom. I want to talk about finding your fit. Can, can we talk for just a I'm, I'm not going to be long. Pastor Cross is coming. Uh, but but I'm, I want to talk about finding your fit. Because the reality is we have a structure in place that uh, feels like maybe you don't fit that structure. Because we have cookie cutter, carbon copy, uh, a lot of different things that we have really uh, in our mind. We have a picture of what it's supposed to look like. And so since if you don't fit that mold, you don't really fit in. Can you say amen? But it's hard to fit in when you've been called to fit out. It's, it's, it's hard to fit the mold when there was not a mold made for you. It's, I'm going to talk to y'all since y'all in the middle right here. It's hard to fit in when, you, when you're creative and everybody around you is comfortable with the mundane. And I want you to look at somebody tonight by the name of Elisha. Everybody say Elisha. Now I'm not stepping on my wife, but she said this is the Joshua generation. I believe this is the Elisha generation. Because Elisha follows Elijah after Elijah has completed all of his miracles. When you read the text, you find out Elijah, has he's doing no more miracles. And it gives me the picture, Pastor, that you have to be careful that people are not following you because of what you can do for them. People who really submit to you will submit to you if you cannot help them or not. But they'll submit based upon what God has told them to do. Can you high five your neighbor and tell them, will you stay where God planted you even if it's not people? And, and so you got you got to really find everybody say find your fit. And, and so and Elijah has completely okay, ready close. Elijah has completed all of his miracles, too. He's not doing any more miracles. And Elisha serves him based upon what he did in the past. And he serves him to a point to where he refuses to leave him even after Elijah has said, I'm going to leave you right here. You can't go any further with me. Elisha says, I won't leave you. And then there are, uh, the school of the prophets, when you read over in 2 Kings, they're talking to Elisha and saying to him, your master is going to be taken up. But you got to be careful with distractions because everybody around you does not understand your fit into the kingdom. Y'all ain't helping me. Everybody around you will try to box you in and say you got to do it like me, look like me, sound like me, but I was not programmed like you. Can you high five your neighbor and say I'm a different breed. I'm a Sodom Zadok. I'm not like everybody else. I'm a keeper of the flame. There's something different on the inside of me. High five your neighbor to offer from an entirely different call. I don't know church. I don't understand church. I'm a wild man. I'm like no John the Baptist. I'm the voice of one Christ in the wilderness, but it's necessary. Can you tell somebody I'm necessary? So let's do this real fast. Let's cross me go. I, I, I got two minutes and I'm out of here. I, I gotta find my fit. But the problem with church, we're talking for a minute, I'm in my zone. The problem with church is we're good at boxing people in. But boxes were never created for people, they were created for packages. <laughs> Uh, you miss me, I'll say it again. Boxes were never created for people. They were created for packages. So I don't have to fit your religious mold. I don't have to fit your religious box. I can do it differently and God will still be glorified. How do you know God is in it? You test the fruit of it. Because there's been this stuff that looks like God, that God is not there. I, I got two minutes. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying this hard. It's hard to preach behind all these crazy people. 
And so Elijah, everybody say Elijah. Elijah, Elijah, Elijah. Now I want to just, I'm going to raise this and I'm going to kill. I promise my last one. Elijah says, follow me. He didn't even say follow me. He throws his mantle. And when he throws his mantle, Elisha receives the mantle. And it's crazy because you would think the first time he got the mantle was when they had crossed the Jordan. But there's always going to be a test run in how you handle real authority. Tell your submission is about to 
stuff uh, that you would not have access to if you did not stay. Grab your neighbor. Uh, we out of here. Uh, grab your neighbor uh, and pull them up. Uh, pull them up uh, and get connected with them. Uh, and tell them what's in you. Uh, I need. Uh, what's in your generation? I need. Uh, what's in you? Uh, I need. Uh, I can't survive uh, without you. Uh, Thank you.